Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey. You probably know me as the martial arts guy, the MMA guy, the MMA coach over here in Shanghai, China, but if you've watched this channel a lot, you know I've actually done a few movie reviews. In fact, I've done several movie reviews with my wife. A lot of people have asked me, Ramsey, why don't we ever see your wife on your channel? Because you never watch my movie reviews, that's why. But she didn't want to appear in this one, but I saw a movie. And it just rubbed me the wrong way, so I'm going to dust off my movie reviewing chops and see what we do with it and where this goes. I saw, what was it called? The Tomorrow War, I think. I think that's what it was called. It came out in theaters here in China. I know it was released a couple months back on like uh, streaming services in the U.S., but it came out in theaters here in China, and my wife said, hey, let's go watch this movie. I said, all right, sure, let's go see it. I like time travel movies. I'm a big fan of science fiction, even though time travel movies are often incredibly disappointing, and for some reason, most of them follow the trope of destroy the time machine at the end, which is just aggravating. They got a time machine, and that's the best use they can think of it. Man, most time travel movies just have... Some of the dumbest uses of time travel ever. Speaking of which, the Tomorrow War. Now, I looked at a few reviews because I wanted to know if people shared my concerns about this film. And a lot of people pointed out how stupid some of the plot holes were. And yeah, we can rehash that a little bit. If you haven't seen the movie, I'll spoil everything for you. So if you want to check out before that and go watch a movie with a bunch of stupid plot holes in it and then come back, great. On we go. Quick plot synopsis. It's the year 2022, next year, I guess, and our hero, Chris Pratt, Star-Lord, whatever his name is in the movie, I don't remember. But Chris Pratt's character, let's just call him Chris Pratt. He's a high school science teacher. And he's got a family. And they seem to have a good thing going on. They're watching a soccer game. And in the middle of this soccer game, a time portal opens up and some soldiers from the future step out and tell the world that they come from 30 years in the future. And 30 years in the future, aliens have invaded the planet. They have reduced the human population down to half a million people. They are losing this war and they need help. And right at this moment, I start getting a bad vibe about these people. I'm thinking, these guys are the bad guys. They're telling a lie right here. Yeah, there's going to be a clever little plot twist. These guys are going to trick the human race into going into this future or this alternate dimension or whatever it is, and something nefarious is going to happen. And it totally did, except, except the movie painted that as a good and noble thing of sorts which just rubbed me the wrong way. So these future soldiers, what do they want? They ask the people of 2022 to go into the future and fight the aliens for them in a war they've effectively already lost. Because the aliens have overtaken pretty much the entire planet. They're killing off the remaining survivors and somehow, somehow, Throwing more bodies at the problem is going to solve the issue. Maybe this is an allegory. If it is, it kind of went over my head. Maybe it's a political allegory, a socio-political commentary. If so, maybe it's brilliant, secretly. But on the surface level, let's just examine the surface level and the storytelling mechanisms. And then we'll get into the time travel a bit, because that's what I really want to talk about is the time travel. Because I really wanted to see if the other reviewers were talking about the time travel and the things that I noticed and the things I picked up and the things I really want to harp on, and most of them were not. In fact, none of them really were. But yeah, the people of the present day agree for some reason, hey, that sounds like a great idea, instead of working with this very valuable 30 years of foreknowledge that in 30 years, aliens will attack at a specific place at a specific time and prepare to stop them instead of being taken by surprise. Let's go into the future and throw a bunch of bodies at a losing cause where most of them will die. Great, let's do that. And so they send military, the military 
all gets killed, they run out of soldiers to send, and so they start drafting civilians by the thousands. Keep in mind, they have the ability to send thousands of people at a time through these time portals. Backward and forward. But for some reason, they, the people of the future don't have this idea, hey, let's abandon ship and go back, back to the past, regroup where the aliens are not yet trying to kill us, and figure out a way to win this war before it happens. No! They draft random civilians, give them no training, send them into the future, and most of them die. It's just a bad plan. How anybody was on board with this, I don't know, but there's, they are draft forcibly, they are conscripted and sent into the future. Why any government on Earth would be okay with this is just bizarre. Long story short. In the future. Dan, that was the guy's name. Dan, that was Chris Pratt's character's name. Dan meets his daughter, but in the future, she's all grown up. She is the commander of the military forces of the future, and she's also a brilliant scientist. Because in movies, people can do everything, man, everything. So she's working on a toxin. She has a toxin that can successfully kill all the male aliens, which comprise the majority of the alien army. They haven't used it. Why? We're never told, other than the fact that she doesn't even want to work on a deployment mechanism for this toxin until she develops one that is 100% successful against both the males and the females, and the toxin doesn't work against the females, and there are very, very few females, but they can reproduce very, very fast. They spread over the world like ants. Giant ants. Giant people-eating ants. So, they capture a female alien, they examine its blood, they create a, a toxin that can successfully kill all the aliens. Chris Pratt has the toxin in hand, a bunch of aliens come to attack to try to stop them. The daughter dies and falls into a fiery lake of aliens and mayhem and explosions. Chris Pratt dives after, I don't know what his plan was, I'll die with you, I don't know, as he's holding humanity's last hope for her survival, presumably in his hands, but he gets teleported back to the past, just in the nick of time. Nobody cares that he has the toxin because the time machine has been destroyed. What did I say? They always destroyed the time machine in these time travel movies. Always, usually on purpose. In this case, the aliens did it. Rather than the inventor of the time machine, a la Doc Brown, etc. But it is what it is. Nobody cares. So he goes to some friends. They get together. They... They discuss, he talks to his wife, and then they start asking all the questions that everybody in the audience was asking a couple minutes into this movie. Well, wait a minute. What if instead of going into the future, we stop the aliens now, preemptively, now that we know where they're going to be and start this attack, etc., etc.? Anyway, they find out the alien ship is buried in some ice in Russia. They go up there, they blast the alien ship out of the ice, they go in there, they plant a bunch of TNT, C4, and they have the toxin with them. They stab some of the aliens with the toxin, inject them with it, they die, but apparently not realizing there's a whole mess of aliens right behind them that jump out of their pods and start attacking, they're like, oh no, we're being overrun by aliens. Well, ignite the C4, boom, they blow up the ship, all the aliens die, except for one queen alien that got outside, and they're like, kill it with fire before it lays eggs. And then they have a hand-to-hand -hand combat fight with the queen alien. Yeah, these bulletproof aliens, mind you, bulletproof aliens, they're killing everybody because they're sending soldiers into the future with guns to fight bulletproof aliens, and yet hand-to-hand -hand combat does the job against the biggest and meanest one. Go figure. So they kill all the aliens. Supposedly the day is saved, but there's a sequel in the works. We'll see where that goes. Let's talk about time travel now, because we've been harping on this plot synopsis for almost ten minutes. <sighs> time travel. I'm going to tell you something pretty wild, pretty wild thought I had about time travel the other day. Your eyes and your brain are a time machine. Yeah, you heard me right. What you are seeing in front of you is not a camera. 
It's not a photorealistic image of the way the world is. It is your mind's prediction of the way the world will be a fraction of, the sec of a second in the future based on previous experiences. This is not me talking out of my butt. This is science. This is the way we process images. When we are babies, the world is blurry. Everything is blurry because we have no context of experience. We look up at the face of our mother and we just see the general definition of the eyes and the roundness of the face, but we don't really see the details. We learn to see the details as we touch them, as we experience them, as we interact with faces, multiple faces, then we can start to put those together. We learn to understand the world around us and how things work by experiencing them. If we haven't experienced it, we can't see it. We can't. And you might be thinking, well, that sounds crazy. Think about car accidents for a moment. How many times have you heard people, they get into a car accident, they almost die, and they say, I didn't see him, he came out of nowhere. Well, yeah, they're telling the truth. They're absolutely, honestly telling you the truth. They did not see that car sideswiping them. They did not see that car in front of them. Perhaps a pedestrian walking down the sidewalk may have seen it because they were paying attention, because they had the context of experience of seeing and experiencing that type of thing before. But the person in the driver's seat literally did not see the car right in front of him that he just ran into. Because he never had the context of experience of a car crash before, or anything like that. Now he does, and hopefully he'll do better next time and not get into a wreck. But that's how it works. That's how it works, man. There's an anecdote about Columbus when he came to the Americas, and the natives of the island of San Salvador apparently were unable to see the ships of Columbus until they stepped on board and handled them and had some contest of experience of what sailing vessels were because apparently they had never seen a sailing vessel like that before. I don't know if that's a true story, but it's very illustrative to this point. Now, when was it? Like 10 years ago, UC Berkeley. Some researchers did some fascinating experiments with mind reading. Well, that was the premise anyway. They tapped into the Google YouTube database and connected this to people's minds with whatever sort of brain measuring equipment they had to try to recreate people's thoughts in a visual format. And it worked, sort of. They would measure what people were thinking about. They would measure what their brain was doing while they were watching movies and then contrasting the brain waves or whatever with a mosaic of images from the YouTube database, they were able to create these composite videos of what the people were seeing and what they remembered and what they're visualizing in their minds. And when they're looking at something like a human face, it, it was shockingly accurate. And when they looked at something a little more abstract, it got kind of interesting, and it, it wasn't portraying exactly what was on the screen, but kind of a rough amalgamation of it. But this, this program, this algorithm, this AI, worked on a very similar principle to the way our eyes and our brain work together. Light goes into the eyes, like a camera, but then that message goes into the brain and is interpreted. It's interpreted with our best interest in mind, self-preservation, right? And in order to preserve ourselves, we have to have some foresight, at least a fraction of a second of it. And so, once again, what we are seeing is not what is literally in front of us. It is your mind's best guess of what will probably happen a fraction of a second in the future by comparing that visual image with this database of images and videos and experiences in our mind and our consciousness, and then regurgitating that into our conscious brain to tell us this is what will probably happen a fraction of a second in the future. So it's a little time machine. Could you expound upon that and create some sort of AI, some sort of device where we could connect to a larger database of experiences than, say, YouTube? 
and a human mind? And see more than a fraction of a second in the future? Oh, what an interesting idea. Well, it would just be that mind's best guess of what would probably happen in the future based on previous experiences. But isn't that what the future is? It's a probability. It's a possibility. It's what might happen, not what will happen. And it's what might happen based on the choices and the decisions that we make right now, leading to that point in the future. And that's one of the big problems with the Tomorrow War, is that we have these people from this probable future, this possible future, that hasn't actually happened, and they come back to the past, and <laughs> they create this enormous loop of time paradoxes. There are many different formats for time travel movies. There's the fairly linear Back to the Future style time travel movie where Mar Marty McFly in 1985 travels in a linear fashion back to 1985, change, sorry, 1955, changes the events of 1955, which in turn change the events of his present day 1985. And it works in this linear fashion like that. It's pretty easy to follow. If you change the past and back to the future, then you change the future. And then we've got different models. The model popularized by the last couple of Avengers movies, the multiple parallel universes idea, where if you time travel, you actually jump into an alternate universe, which is like your universe until something's changed through time travel, and then it branches off, and it's actually a different universe with essentially a different set of people that look like you and talk like you and sound like you, but now they're making different decisions because that butterfly effect, whatever it was, whether it's a, a magic rock coming into or out of existence in that universe or people dying who weren't supposed to die or whatever changes the course of history, but... In the main universe, things go as they always would have, right? And then we got the Harry Potter version, which is kind of like the linear version that we see in Back to the Future, except events can't change. It's just the way it always was. Spoiler if you haven't seen or read the Harry Potter books or movies, but... They have a time travel device, a little time travel MacGuffin that allows the heroes to go back in time. And what do they do with it? There's a moment in the past, at one point the present, where Harry is being attacked by these magical monsters that are trying to suck his soul out. And he looks into the distance and thinks he sees his father casting a spell to protect him and, and send these monsters away. But it turns out it was really just Harry from the future who had mastered this magical spell to cast the monsters away. It always happened in the Harry Potter universe because it always happened. Because that's how time travel works. If it happened, it happened. If it happened in the future, it happened in the past. It's, it's just the way it always was. And the way it always will be, it's, it's kind of a fatalistic timeline. The Tomorrow War, we are never really told exactly what type of, type of timeline it is. We're hinted at it. At first, it kind of seems like it might be a multiple parallel universes type of thing, in which case the actions taken by the soldiers from the future are just pure evil. Just pure, irresponsible evil. But if it is the Back to the Future style, change the past, changes the future type of thing, which they also allude to toward the end, where Dan's daughter says to him, go back to the past, take this toxin, make sure this future never happens. Implying that if he changes the past, that future won't happen, and then everything will be all peaches and roses in the future from there on out. Either way, the actions taken by the people from the future were stupid and irresponsible and evil, and they are the bad guys. They are the true villains of this movie, not the aliens. The aliens were just doing what the aliens were supposed to do. They're genetically predispositioned to eat stuff and kill things. But humans, we have the capacity to think about things for a couple minutes, rationalize and think, hey, this is a bad idea. This is a better one. Let's choose the better one. And that was not the case with what the human protagonists who were really the antagonists did in this film. So let's talk about paradoxes. Yeah, 
There's a paradox. People from the future come to the past. They give the people of the past a warning. Aliens will come and destroy the world. Do something about it. So, the people of the past, eventually at the end, preemptively kill off the aliens before the big alien war happens in 30 years. Problem solved, right? Well, except if we're following the linear time model, which is implied, it's implicit in, the, in this movie. Remember Dan's daughter said, go back to the past, change the past so this future will never happen. If that's the case, then we've just created ourselves a vicious time loop that they're going to be stuck in forever, fighting aliens for the rest of all eternity. How so? If the war never happens, if the aliens never come out and threaten humanity, then the people of the future never come back to the past, and they never explain the situation, and the people of the past never have the forewarning, so they don't go and preemptively kill the aliens, and so the future war happens, and the human population is once again reduced to half a million people, and then eventually zero as the aliens overtake the entire planet. But then they build the time machine before that happens, go back to the past, and start the vicious cycle once again. And it just repeats. They're caught in a time loop. It's like, man, they did several fascinating episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation about time loops. They're stuck in a time loop, and they have to do something to break the time loop, and it's usually something pretty unorthodox that you wouldn't really expect. There's some smart writing in Star Trek. Man, I love Star Trek. The original series, The Next Generation. I've been fairly disappointed with modern Star Trek as of late because they've just abandoned good science fiction writing, I think. So, hopefully this new Star Trek, Strange New Worlds, is going to be better. It seems like they took the best parts, the parts people actually liked about Star Trek Discovery. You know, the original crew from the pilot episode of Star Trek, the original series, in their old fashion-looking uniforms on the Starship Enterprise with Spock, etc. And they want to give people what they want, hopefully. Hopefully. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Anyway. I love Star Trek, and I don't want it to... Don't want it to dwindle into some nonsense Star Trek was never meant to be. But yeah, we're stuck in a time loop. How do you break that time loop? Maybe this is what the sequel is going to be about. Because at the end of this movie, we think, oh, the aliens are gone. We won. But then the time loop continues. And they're like, oh, no, we have to break the time loop. Well, that might be smart writing. They can make something smart out of something stupid. We have this stupid premise based on stupid decisions that stupid people made. But, but it could be salvaged. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. I don't think I've ever been this aggravated or angry about a movie. Now I'm not shouting at the camera. I'm not angry at you. I'm, I was upset about the movie, about the course of direction that the writers, directors, producers, etc. took in making this, this film. It was just aggravating. Aggravating. And these aren't thoughts I had, like, an hour later, thinking about it critically, these are thoughts I had while watching the movie. Like, no, man, y'all are doing it wrong. It's not good writing. Anyway, if you saw the movie, what did you think? What's the best time travel movie you ever saw? What's the most plausible explanation of time travel? And have you seen a time travel movie where they didn't destroy the time machine? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Now get out there, stop watching movies for a minute, and train.